crap, you guys. Aliens are coming. They want to take over our minds. But don't worry. I'll keep it safe. Unless... Unless I'm already one of them. No, no, I'm not. Oh, crap. I have colander hair. Why do I keep doing that? You should not be allowed near weapons. Anyway, today we are here to talk about a book that I actually really liked. I know, right? What is up with that? I know what you're thinking. PC Patient Zero, you hate everything. You are just full of loathing for all things that are good and beautiful in the universe. Wrong. There are a few things that have melted my stony, icy, hard lump of a heart slash soul. And one of those things is a book called The Fifth Wave, which is about aliens. But let's read the back. <laughs> well, let me just start by saying that USA Today says on the back cover, a modern sci-fi masterpiece should do for aliens what Twilight did for vampires. Ho 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 ho! USA Today, you did not just compare this book to Twilight. Because other than the fact that they have teenagers in them, they have very little to nothing in common. You're on my shit list, USA Today. After the first wave, only darkness remains. After the second, only the lucky escape. And after the third, only the unlucky survive. After the fourth wave, only one rule applies. Trust no one. Now it's the dawn of the fifth wave, and on a lonely stretch of highway, Cassie runs from them. The beings who only look human, who roam the countryside killing everything they see, who have scattered Earth's last survivors. To stay alone is to stay alive, Cassie believes, until she meets Evan Walker, beguiling and mysterious. Evan Walker may be Cassie's only hope for rescuing her brother, or even saving herself. But Cassie must choose between trust and despair, between defiance and surrender, between life and death, to give up or to get up. Which sounds a little bit dirty. Yeah, so... You know how often I read the back cover and I say that it sounded more interesting on the back cover than the book actually was? This one is the opposite. The back cover actually makes it sound sort of stereotypical and bland, and this book completely rises above what the back cover tells you. Before we begin, a little spoiler warning. I am going to try to keep this free of major spoilers, but there probably will be minor spoilers in this review. So if you're the type of person who cannot know anything about a book besides what the back cover tells you, this review is not for you. However, if knowing a few random tidbits about the story doesn't bother you, then watch on, dear viewer. So guys, for once, the stuff that I like about a book severely outnumbers the stuff I didn't like. What? Let's talk about all the stuff that I really liked about this book. Okay, let me start off by saying the atmosphere of this book is great. It's really tense and mysterious. The aliens are a body snatcher type of alien, which the back cover kind of hints at, and so you never know who is on your side, who is an alien, and who's not. It's great, it's mysterious, it's dark, I love it. Now I know what you're thinking. Body snatcher type aliens, they look just like humans. This has been done, it's been done to death. Well, I have a little something to say about that. Rick Yancey, the author of this book, does an amazing job with it. He proves to us that old, used ideas are not bad ideas if you can rewrite them in an interesting way. Even though his aliens are fairly formulaic, and we've seen them before, the way that this book is written and the characters in it elevate it far above what some other people are doing. Might I mention The Host, which is similar to this? Yeah, this book is what The Host kind of should be, you know just with the basic overall premise of aliens taking over human bodies. The main characters were awesome. Cassie is the main female lead, and I know the back makes you think that Evan is going to be the male lead, but he's actually not. The male lead is a character called Ben, and I know what you're thinking, male and female lead, they must be a romantic interest to each other, but that's not actually what happens in the book. Evan is the romantic interest for Cassie, 
but he's not the male lead. So let's talk about Cassie. Cassie strikes me as not your typical female protagonist like we see in so many YA books these days. Oh my gosh, I'm so sick of them. You know the ones I'm talking about. She's a little bit Katniss-esque, but not quite as infuriating to read about. She's a little bit more self-aware, I feel. So even as she falls into some of her foibles, she understands that about herself. She knows that this is a problem for her, but she's not to the point where she can easily get past that problem. One of the things she has a problem with, and she admits to herself, is that she really does go for looks. And that's one of the reasons she likes Evan, is because he's attractive. But she knows that about herself, and knows it enough where she can use caution with him. The girl has a creeper meter. She can tell when someone's a creepin'. It's not like Edward, where she finds creepy behavior attractive. Cassie spends a lot of time caught between desire and instinct, which is pretty interesting because honestly, instinct usually wins. Even if something is pretty, if she senses that it might be dangerous, usually that instinct that it's dangerous will win out in the end. She isn't an emo. Yeah, she can be a little bit overdramatic at times, but she's a teenager, so what do you expect? It doesn't go over the top. She doesn't sit around and wallow in things constantly. I mean, granted, her world was destroyed, so that gives her a little bit of wallow fodder, but I just didn't notice it as bad as characters like, say, Triss from Divergent, who will not freaking stop wallowing in the second book long enough to wipe her own ass. And this girl will kill if she has to, but she's not like Katniss in that Katniss is like a freaking killing machine. She just, you know, she'll kill you if she has to, whatever, she doesn't care. Cassie strikes that really great balance of caring that she had to kill someone, but understanding that she had to do it to save someone else. At one point, bad shit's going down, and she shoots a bad guy, and carries on. Most YA characters would then have a several minute long monologue in their head about, oh, how I wish I didn't have to kill someone. No, whatever, bitch, it's war. You shoot the guy and you move on. Let's talk a little bit about Ben, who is the male lead. He is arguably a slightly weaker character than Cassie, but still pretty believable and I like him a lot. Ben is neither a meathead or a whiny little wiener geek guy. Those seem to be the two types of guys that you can get in your YA story. The one who is unpopular at high school and just but very brainy and misunderstood, or the guy who just wins everything because he is just stronger and better, faster, smarter. There you go. Yeah, he's neither of those. He's like a real person. He's a good big brother. Not only does he look out for his own sibling as best he can, but he also looks out for other people who can't take care of themselves. He's honest and he's earnest. He seems just like a really sweet guy, the sort of guy that you would like to be friends with. He's not an asshole. That's refreshing. Okay, back to talking about the book and what it did right. I really like the alien invasion from the point of view of teenagers slash children because it doesn't feel like the author just did this because he wanted to have a young adult book. It makes sense within the book for the main characters to be young. Just, just read it, you'll understand. And it really doesn't feel shoehorned in like, oh, it's a, it's a YA book, so I guess my main characters have to, to be teenagers, even though that doesn't really matter to anything. The bad guy in this, the main bad guy, was straight up evil. And normally that would bother me, but I didn't mind too much because you completely understood why he was straight up evil. In many other books, it's just like, yeah, he's evil because he's the bad guy, but why? What made him so evil? This guy, you know where he's coming from, and you're like, you can love to hate him because he's just... Meh. The character of Evan, the romantic interest for Cassie, I'm not sure how to feel about him. Certain sides to him really annoy me, and certain sides don't, and I think my not knowing how to feel about him is actually kind of intentional, because Cassie doesn't really know how to feel about him either. And not in the Bella Edward Jacob sort of way, where it's like, oh, he loves me, but maybe I don't love him because I'm an emo. It's more in the illogical, he could be really dangerous and bad kind of way, and I am not actually into dangerous people who are gonna kill me. Unlike Bella, who apparently that, that's her thing. I know, I keep comparing this to Twilight, but USA Today did it on the freaking cover. The best thing about this book is that it felt crafted. 
everything felt very intentional. The word choice, the flow. Usually 99.9% .9 of the young adult books that I read, and I do read a lot of them, I don't review them all, um, don't feel crafted, they feel slapdash, they feel barely edited. This felt tight. This was a very tight book and very intentional writing. And it gives me hope for the young adult genre that there are still a few that are trying to have really tight, intentional writing versus the just sort of slapdash feeling that I get from most of the writing nowadays. It's like, if I put a bunch of flowery words in there, that's what makes it good, right? Wrong. So, so wrong. Okay, now, you understand, of course, because I'm a horrible, horrible person, that even when I love a thing, I have to find a few flaws in it. This drives my husband crazy, because he just wants to love a thing and not find anything that he doesn't like about it. But if you're like me, you can pick apart even the things that you love. So here are a few of my little things that I didn't like as much about this book. There's love in it, and it kind of saves the day a little bit. You know what I'm talking about, that sort of mushy, you're the only one for me, please don't ever leave me alone, love. Not a fan. It's limited, it's not too bad, but it's there. Something else that's limited, and I'm glad that it is, but it is there, is a little bit of masturbation over how awesome humans are. You get that in a lot of sci-fi stories, especially ones like this that are just from a very single human perspective. Um, it's not so bad. The scenes that have it in are short. She doesn't go on and on about hum how humans will succeed because we have the will and we will struggle through and aren't humans awesome. There's just a little bit of that. I don't know if this is a bad thing or not, but there were honestly more people alive at the end than I expected. I think that makes me a terrible person. Ben, the male main character, got a love interest as well and she was... She was probably the blandest. She was a very stereotypical badass female character, and you, if you watch my other reviews, you know what I'm talking about. She's just... she's just okay. I wish that she had been more dimensional, and that she had had more to her. But she is kind of a minor character, so that doesn't matter as much. And just a little nitpick of mine, this is kind of the last one. Cassie, at the beginning of the book, explains the story of what happened up until the point where she's at. What happened when the aliens came and what the aliens did to them. That's cool. It's an interesting way to do it. It gets you to her story and what the, the story that the author wants to tell without you having to watch all of this backstory. Cassie will tell it to you. But I think it could have been a little bit shorter and she could have been a little bit less melodramatic about it. Like, her most melodramatic moments are in the telling of what happened before. And it's a tough balance to strike, because you want a character who cares about the things that have happened in her past, especially something as terrible as lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people dying to horrible alien attacks. But sometimes it is a little bit annoyingly overdramatic. And you just want to be like, tone it down, honey. Tone it down. Easy. Other than that, though, I really like this book. Have you guys read it? If so, leave me a comment. Some people really didn't like it. So I think it comes down to a matter of taste. And judging by this book, you can kind of see from this what I might be into. And if you agree with me, hey, maybe uh, you and I should, like, hang out. And if you don't agree with me, get out. No, I'm just kidding. Get out. Leave your comments below. I know you will eventually. So, uh, in the meantime, aliens are coming, bro. Send yourselves.